Um, so everything we're going to be showing you guys is for the purpose for, you, for the purpose um, of you guys learning what evangelism is, what evangelism isn't, and we want to make sure you guys um, become uh, evangelists. And I want to make sure that you guys learn what evangelism is, how to do it. Um, what is different things that a lot of times we think is evangelism, but it's not evangelism. We, we might think that, okay, I'm doing something, okay, I'm probably doing evangelism, or I'm doing the words, and we're actually not. So we're actually going to be speaking on um, words, words, effects of the gospel. So many Christians have are confused about these three key words. First one is works, the works of the gospel. The second one is effects of the gospel. And then we have the words of the gospel. In other words, let's say King Arthur, let's say if I'm sick and you pray for me, what are you, what, are, what and I get and I get healed, what are, what are, what just happened right there? Okay, so praying for the sick, right? So praying for the sick, he just did a work. Okay? Me being healed is an effect. Okay? It's an effect of the gospel. So let's say I am sick. King Arthur here prayed for me. So Arthur prays for me. I'm all of a sudden healed. There was a work done and there's an effect done. But if I'm an unbeliever, am I safe? Have you ever heard the gospel? No. So we just did a work. Good. We just did an effect. Okay? Perfect. We know that healing is an effect of the gospel. So these are the three key words that we want to explain to you guys. We want to go in depth and explain to them the three different uh, um, words of what they mean. So we know feeding the hungry, being hospitable, clothing the naked, meeting people's physical needs, visiting, the, uh, visiting those in prison, giving money, supporting missions, praying, fasting, intercession, are what? Are works of the gospel. Then we have acts, charity, kindness, love, Counseling, uh, caring, teaching, discipling, supporting uh, different projects, etc. These are the what? The works of the gospel. Okay? Then let's see what the effects. The effects are delivered from bondage and addictions, changing character and motivation, corruptness to justice, bondage to liberty, death to life, blindness to sight. What happened to Paul? You know, you know he was completely going up the way, and then all of a sudden he, he said, I received sight. He changed. God changed him. Unbelief to believe in faith, triumph of good over evil, prison uh, to freedom, hopeless to hope. So these are the effects of the gospel. When Jesus said in Mark 16, 15, he said, go into the world and proclaim the gospel. He was referring to the words of the gospel. Okay, not works or effects. The words of the gospel. He said, go and do what? Proclaim the gospel. Okay, so what happens if we go on the street and say, Arthur goes in the street and he, does, he, he comes up to a person who never heard the gospel and prays for him. Is that what Jesus is talking about? Okay, what if Walter comes up to somebody and says, Hey brother, I'm going to give you some money because I feel like you're homeless and I'm going to give you some money. Is that, this, did that person hear the gospel? No. No. When Paul warned us to jealously guard the gospel in Galatians 1, 6 to 9, he was also referring on the words of the gospel. Because guard it. Don't, be, don't think that if, you, if, you're, if, you, if you're doing all these different charity things, that people actually, uh, people actually hear the gospel. Says, guard it. When Paul also said in Romans 1, 16, go and uh, uh, the gospel is the power of God for salvation. He was making reference to the words of the gospel, not works. Or effects of the gospel. Words have effects. The disciples went out and preached everywhere, and then what? The Lord worked with them, confirming the words and the signs accomplished them. So what happened? The disciples went out, they preached the gospel, and what happened? What happened? Uh, well, they, uh, the works and words and, and effects followed them, right? So Peter, he went to the he went to um, the t the disciples. We went to the temple. They preached the gospel at the same time as preaching the gospel, what they would do? They wouldn't forget the sick, right? At the same time, what do they do? They prayed over people. And yes, even Peter's shadow would heal people. So the intent is always to do what? To share the message of God, which is the word of God, right? And then effects and the, uh, and the works will follow. Many Christians can recite prayers, 
many Christians recite different songs, right? You can, you know, you know, it by heart, you know, Waymaker, you know, we can recite all these good songs, but you know that Christians don't know the four basic elements of the gospel. I'm, we're going to go through it real fast. The first one is why we must be saved. Second is how Jesus can save us, what we must do to be saved, and what is the cost of discipleship. So I'm going to back up a little bit. Can somebody raise, raise your hand and tell me why we must be saved? Separation from God because of sin. Okay, so we must be, why we must be saved is because we're separated from God. Okay. How can Jesus save us? Believing in Jesus. Okay, believing in Jesus. Okay. Anyone else want to answer what? Who has it? Somebody hasn't answered yet. Who can answer the what we must do to be saved? Repent and trust in the Savior. Okay, repent and trust in the Savior. And the cost of discipleship, when does it start? Oh, can somebody explain to me what is the cost of discipleship? Anyone, anyone? What was it? Okay, your life. Anyone else? Okay, so we don't want the works of the gospel without the words of the gospel. We don't want that. Why? Because you're going to be just like the Hindu or the Buddhist or the non-Christian who's already doing good works. We don't want to do good works without sharing the gospel so people can be saved. We want to make sure people are saved while we're doing works and effects. Also, we don't want the words of the gospel without the works of the gospel. Okay, we want to make sure we do the works of the gospel while we're doing the words of the gospel. So words and works, these go together, okay? So now I'm going to present to you guys the gospel message. Okay, I want you guys to be very focused in, if something happens, what time do you guys get, uh, what's the next time? 11.30. 11.30, okay. If I go a little over, just bear with me, okay? So I'm going to, I'm going to explain to you guys the gospel message. Okay, this is the same gospel message that Tony was talking about that when he heard it, he gave his life to Christ. The one he's saying that we're going to share it, okay? So can I share it with you? Yes. This is the, let's say um, the meaning of life message, right? The gospel message. Bible says that God is holy, okay, and heaven is holy, and the word holy means perfect. All of us have a body and a soul. The soul, this is the real you, your emotions, your thought process, your desires, all those come from the soul. Do you know that you are not the body, you are the soul, you have a body? And the soul, this is the real you. This lives on forever, either in heaven or in hell, and there's no third place for you to go. People say, well, come on, I see, you know, are there ghosts and stuff like that? No, when you die, you either go to heaven or hell. And there's no third place for you to go. You just don't roam around this world when you die. You either go to heaven or hell. But we have a problem. The Bible says if you like ones, cheated ones, hated ones, just once, then your soul, which is the real you, is actually the real you becomes imperfect and you cannot enter heaven. I have a question. Do you know anyone, obviously besides Jesus Christ, that ever walked and lived in this world that's never broken of any of God's commandments? Anyone? No, no one. No one has ever walked this world without ever committing a sin. So this is our problem. All of us have a broken, uh, all of us have a broken God's laws, therefore all people have imperfect souls. We have imperfect records. The Bible says that the only way for us to make it to heaven is right is, is to be perfect, because God is perfect, right? So think this logically. To get to heaven, you have to have a perfect record, because God is perfect, heaven is perfect, and for us to get there, we have to be perfect people. But sadly, none of us are perfect people. So all of us are going to hell. And you might think, come on, that's harsh. How can a loving God create a place like hell, let alone send people there? Like, how can God do that? I thought God was a loving judge. Why would God send people, and why would he do that? Well, can I explain to you why there has to be a place called hell? Can I explain to you guys? I want you guys to imagine someone you love. Maybe your mom. Maybe your dad. Maybe your best friend. Maybe somebody in this room. Imagine somebody you love dearly. Okay, take a second. Put that person in your head. And imagine you're walking on a beautiful Brayton beach. Okay? So all close your eyes for a second. Imagine with that person you love, you're walking in Brayton Beach. Boom! That person is shot right in front of you. Okay, you guys can open your eyes. That person is shot right in front of you. 
and you're horrified, and you see, you, and then this person who the murderer runs away, and you see your best friend, or maybe your mom, or your dad, or someone you love is bleeding in front of you, and you're thinking, why is this happening? All of a sudden, the police catch the murderer, they bring him to court. But three or four, this is what the judge says to the murderer. He says, this is a really bad thing you've done for killing that person's loved one. But hey, because I'm a loving judge, hey, I'm just going to let you off. You can go home. You're going to be angry, right? Why? Because you know when somebody has broken the law, they must be punished. Otherwise, there's no justice, right? They have to be punished. Otherwise, there's no justice. So you see, hell is not about love. It's about justice. I have a question for you guys. Has anybody here ever lied before? Raise your hands. Anybody ever lied here before? Raise your hand. Okay, same as me. I'm guilty in that too. Okay, has anybody ever stolen him before? Raise your hand. I know you guys are a bunch of liars in here, so raise your hands. Okay, so that is two out of three. So do you think God is going to let a bunch of thieves and liars like us into heaven? And that is just two out of ten commandments. If God lets us into heaven with our sins, he's going to be just like the unjust judge who failed to punish the murderer of the one you love. And God is just. God is a just God. But somebody might say, come on, Andrew. Lying and stealing is just two little things. I'm not like the murderer in your story. I've never killed anyone. Look what the Bible says. The Bible says, if you hated someone in your heart, you've murdered them in your heart. So third question. Has anyone here ever hated or felt disliked as another fellow human being? Raise your hand. Same as me. Guilty. We are guilty as charged. This is the bad news. For the sake of justice, there has to be a place like hell. There has to be a place like hell. But can I share with you guys the good news? Can I share the, a way for us to be forgiven? Right. This is all is in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at the, look at the timeline. He split timeline between B.C. and A.D. Christmas and Easter is all about what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. What Jesus Christ did for us to be forgiven. But look at the significance. Look at Jesus and look at us. We are so imperfect, and look at Jesus. He's so perfect. 2,000 years ago, actually, I'll say 2,020 years ago, God the Father, here, sitting on the throne, and this is Jesus, they had a conversation about you, every single person here in this room, it was something like this. He says, Father, I really love the people in IDT. I don't want them to go to hell for breaking your law. Is there a way for them to be forgiven? And God says, Jesus. There is one way, my son. I love you. If you go to earth and become a human being and live a perfect life on earth and then die a cruel and painful death on the cross and be totally abandoned and to take the punishment which the people in IIT justly deserve for breaking my law, then I make it possible for them to be forgiven. On that day when they turn in faith and ask you to exchange their imperfect record for your Perfect record. The Bible says there's three major events in your life. The first one is birth. You have no power where you're going to be born. You, know, you can be born in China. You could have been born in Africa. You could be born in the United States. You could have been born in Jackson, Florida. You have no power over that. Second, you also have no power when you're going to die. You can die tonight. You can die 30 years from now. You have no power over that. The third one, you do have power. It's when we ask Jesus Christ to give his perfect record to us. But look at this. Now, we're not forgiven by being christened, baptized, confirmed, praying, going to church, believing God exists, or trying to be good. None of those things will give you salvation. Oh, come on, Andrew. I, you're saying if I don't go to church, I, I can't be saved just going to church? No. How about believing God exists? The Bible says that demons believe that in that Jesus is God, right? They believe that God exists. Are they saved? No. There's two things we must do to be forgiven. First, you must be willing to turn away from anything you know is wrong and say sorry to Jesus. Second, but notice I said willing. There's maybe some things in your life you completely feel powerless against. Completely feel powerless against. But that's okay because God will help you those things. You must be willing and want to turn from those things. 
It's like, oh, I know I have a lot of junk in my life. I have a lot of sins and stuff. As long as you're willing, God will help you with those things. Second, to be forgiven, we must surrender to Jesus Christ. What does that mean? Well, if God made you in your mother's womb and he knit you together, and he made this world just for you, the beautiful world you live in that you have breath and life, every single second you take your breath and you see the beauty and the way your body functions, everything, he made this all for you. Do you think that God deserves to be the very center person of your life? Do you? Of course he does. Surrendering is when G, when we surrender is when we acknowledge that Jesus Christ is God. So let's say you turn and surrender to be forgiven. This is what it will look like for you. So this is you. This is your midwife. This is this is you right here. Your, your midwife is holding you. This is your mom. This is a delivery suite. You were just born. When you are born, God opens up this book about your life called the record book of your life. But beware, God never sleeps. He sees everything. Every attitude, every thought, motive, action you and I will ever do, God sees it and he writes it in his book. Can you imagine by the time you and I are dead, there's a whole library of things written against us? Ready to send us to hell. Ready to send us to hell. A whole library of things ready to send us to hell. But when you ask Jesus for forgiveness, this is what happens. Deuteronomy says that God will stand on top of a mountain, right? And he forgets all your seeds and throws it to the deepest sea to never remember your sins again. God stands on top of the mountain. He rips all those pages, all those written requirements, ready to see you to hell. And he rips all those pages out of your record and he throws them to the deepest sea to never remember them again. And then he takes your book with your name on the spine. Okay? With your name on the spine. With the record of Jesus Christ in your book, he stores your book in the library as a precious library book in heaven. He takes your book with now Jesus' record. Remember, you have to believe, right? And receive the record of Jesus Christ. Believe what Jesus Christ did on you by receiving Jesus' record in your life. He stores your book in heaven as a precious library book. And he promises to you that from the day you ask Jesus to forgive you till the day you die, He's not going to touch that book. By that time, you're going to mess up. You're going to sin. The Bible says that righteous men will fall down seven times, but do what? Right back up. Jesus promises to never touch that book ever again. So let's say you die, and we will you stand before God on Judgment Day. We all will. And God's going to say, go get their book. And the angel's going to get your book, and God's going to say, you were perfect. And you're going to say, uh, no, I wasn't. I wasn't perfect. Don't I justly, uh, broke your law? Don't I justly deserve to go to hell? And Jesus will say, for the sake of justice, you do deserve to go to hell. Uh, you did break my laws, and some you broke many times. But you, my beautiful son and daughter, you have my perfect record, which I gave to you when you turned and surrendered to me on earth. <laughs> so I forgave you. So welcome to heaven. See, so Jesus Christ did the time for our time. We were so guilty, but Jesus Christ was so innocent. Jesus paid our way to heaven. We were the ones who were guilty. He was completely innocent. But let's say you are here tonight. And let's say you never asked Jesus to forgive you. Let's say you never turned and surrendered to Jesus Christ. Let's see how it looks like for you. You'll one day die, and you're going to stand before God on Judgment Day. I don't know if you guys can see a little bit, but here, here it is. God's going to say, I'm so sorry, people, that I see. I can't let you into heaven. I have to send you to hell. You see? You never turn and surrender to me. I loved you so much that I tried six ways to get to you. First, I got on a cross for you. I took your punishment... All the sins that you will ever done from the second you were born to the second you die, every single sin you have ever committed, I took it upon myself. And God killed me for your sin. I died in your place. I died in your place. You did nothing. Second, 
I send the team from GCS and Andrew explained to you the gospel message. But you still did nothing. Third, there is churches all around the city you're from. SMBS, Great Church, Living Stream. And there's churches all around the world, yes, some I was ashamed of. But you could have found the good ones. And you could have heard the gospel message. But you still did nothing. Fourth, I gave you a conscience. Every single time you're running away from me, every single time you're sinning, you knew exactly what you were doing. Why? Because your conscience that I built inside of you told you that's wrong. You did nothing. Fifth, are you trying to tell me that you came to IBT, to one of the most beautiful cities, Jacksonville, gorgeous beaches, and you never went out to the beaches and never wondered, Goodness, what is the God who created this world? And you never turned and surrendered to me? You were in the, one of the most beautiful cities and you never turned and surrendered to me by acknowledging me as a created God? Really? And sixth, and finally, I rose from the dead to prove to you that I'm God and everything that I said in the Bible is true and faithful. And your sins were forgiven. All you have to do is believe. But you still did nothing. I'm sorry. I can't, I'm not a thief like you. See, I can't steal your free will. I'm not a thief like you, so I can't steal your free. I'm only sending you, and I'm only giving you what you want. So I can't take you to heaven. I have to send you to hell. I want you guys to be honest with yourselves today. Be honest with yourselves. If you died tonight, where would you go? Would you go to heaven or would you go to hell? The Bible says to get to heaven, you have to have a perfect record. First, this is the only two ways we can get it. First is to be a perfect person. Is anybody here a perfect person? No, we've gone down. Then we have a second one and only <coughs> option we have is to ask Jesus Christ to give this perfect record to us. Yeah. There must be two things that Jesus said that we must be forgiven. Do you guys remember what those things are? First, to turn away from anything you know is wrong. Right? Turn away from anything you know is wrong. And I know there's a lot of wrong things we do. As long as you're willing. As long as you're willing and you want to. Jesus will help you those things. Right? Second, is surrender to Jesus Christ. By acknowledging him, him as God. And in faith, having faith that Jesus Christ died for my sins. Jesus, I believe that you died for my sins, that you died on the cross. And if you don't do those two things, it is impossible to enter heaven. And that is so sad. Because that, that is the very reason why Jesus Christ died for you. That is the very reason why Jesus Christ died for you. Can you every single person just can you guys just close your eyes and bow your heads real fast? I want to ask you guys a question here. If you were to die tonight, where would you go? Would you go to heaven or hell? To get to heaven, you have to have a perfect record. A perfect record. The Bible says that God is holy and heaven is holy. The word holy means perfect. Meaning, the only way you can go to heaven is if you have zero sin. Either you die for your own sin and go to hell for eternity. Either you pay for your own sin and hell, or you find somebody else to pay for your sin. I found Jesus to pay for my sin. Did you find Jesus? Have you ever asked Jesus Christ to pay for your sin? To give you his perfect record? Either you will pay for your sin and eternity in hell. Or you have to find somebody. You see, my friends, I can't die for your sins because I have to go to hell for my own sins. I have to find someone to die for my sin. I have found Jesus. Have you found Jesus? Have you found Jesus? Have you ever asked him to die for your sins? Have you ever put your faith in what Jesus Christ did on the cross by dying for every single sin that you ever committed? Every single sin you've committed in the past? present, future. He died for every single sin. Do you believe that? 
with all eyes closed. If you were to die tonight, where would you go, heaven or hell? Or would you have doubts? If you're thinking, Andrew, I have doubts, or I would go to hell. Can you please just raise your hand? Nobody's looking, just raise your hand. Andrew, I have doubts. God bless you. I see your hand. Anyone else? God bless you. Anyone else? God bless you. God bless you. Anyone else? All eyes closed. Anyone else? Thank you. I see your hand, brother. Thank you. Give me guys a couple more seconds. Anyone else? Right now, if you're driving in a car after IBC and you get killed, how confident are you that you're going to be in heaven with Jesus Christ when you die? If you are not confident, just raise your hand and say, Andrew, I'm not confident. God bless you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Amen. Okay. Can I pray for you guys? Why don't you guys all to just repeat this after me? Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus I, realize I realize that I am a sinner, I am a sinner. and I am in need of a Savior. And I believe, and I believe that you are God, Jesus, you are God Jesus, and you are the prophesied Messiah who came and died for my sin. And I believe that you resurrected on the third day to prove to me you are God. And everything you said in the Bible is true and faithful. And that my sins are forgiven. So I put my faith in Jesus Christ and what Jesus Christ did on the cross. I take that by faith. And Lord, help me with all the sins that I can't stop doing. I am willing to stop. Everything I know is wrong. And surrender to you, Jesus. By faith, I acknowledge you died for my sins. And all my sins are forgiven. Not because of what I did, but because of what you did on the cross. Amen. Guys, the Bible says that if you shall confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be what? Saved. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Yeah. Do you truly believe that? Yeah. Now, can I... Um, can I invite somebody to come and uh, to come, come sit right here real fast? I wanna I wanna I wanna do something real fast. Okay, you can not hear brave man. Yes, go ahead and sit here. So um I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you a question. Okay. Um if you were to die tonight, yeah, where would you go? Heaven or hell would you have doubts? I would go to heaven. Okay. Why do you think you go to heaven? Because Jesus is my Lord. Okay. Why do people go to heaven? Or, and why do people go to hell? People go to hell because they don't believe in Jesus. Okay. And why do people go to hell? Because they're disconnected from God. Because of not believing in Jesus. Okay. So, so people go to heaven because why? Because they believe in Jesus. Yeah, they believe in Jesus. What about Jesus is so special they have to believe? He's perfect for all his ways. Okay. He's perfect. But what did Jesus do to get you to go to heaven? He died for me. You died for what? For my sins. Do you believe that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, why do people have to go to hell? Because they sin. Okay. Because do you sin? I have been. Do you sin today? I do. Sometimes. So do you go to hell? I go? No, I go to hell. But, but, you, said, <laughs> but you said if, if the, the reason why people are going to, to, to hell is because they sin. Yeah. Okay. I sin. Like you sin. So are, we going, are you going to hell? No. Okay, so tell me again. Why do people go to heaven? Because they believe in Jesus. Okay, they believe in Jesus. What about Jesus that they believe? He died for my sins. Okay, so then why do people go to hell? Because they do not believe in him. In this okay, what is about what is significant about them that they don't believe? Because demons believe in Jesus. Have demons go to heaven? He's Savior. Yeah, somebody said he's Savior. He's savior. Okay, anyway. Okay, what do you say? What do you say? 
He cleansed, okay, a record. No one he, made made us he made us perfect. Okay, good job, guys. Can you guys give us a round of applause? Okay, so the reason why you're going to heaven is not because you go to church, not because you believe in Jesus, like you believe that Donald Trump exists, okay? It's because you know Donald Trump does not mean he knows you. The reason why you're going to heaven is because you put your faith in Jesus Christ, what you did 2,000 years ago, and you have faith that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. Yeah. So the